Once upon a time, there was a nice old couple. One day, the old man was working in the fields like usual, when a mean tanuki came by. He wanted to play a trick on the farmer. So as soon as the farmer would plant some seeds, he would come and dig them up. The farmer quickly noticed what the tanuki was doing. The tanuki taunted the farmer, believing it would be easy to escape. But when he tried to run away, he tripped and the very angry farmer caught him. The farmer tied up the tanuki and kept him in his house while he thought about what to do with him. The next day, before he went to the fields, he told his wife to make sure the tanuki stayed tied up, no matter what. As the woman worked around the house, the tanuki began talking to her. He begged for hours to be let go, and he promised he would never do any mean tricks ever again. Eventually, the woman believed him and untied the rope. The tanuki repaid her by casting a spell on her that made her very sick, and he told her that she deserved it for falling for his tricks. The old man was terribly distraught and was mumbling to himself about his problem while washing his clothes. Luckily, a rabbit was nearby and wanted to know why the old man was so upset. The old man explained everything that happened. This filled the rabbit with a rage for justice. He promised that he would get revenge against the tanuki. The rabbit quickly got to work and bundled up some straw. When the tanuki passed by, he was curious about why the rabbit had so much straw. The rabbit told him he was taking the straw as an offering to a shrine at the top of Crackling Mountain so he could receive a great blessing. The tanuki also wanted a blessing, so he went with the rabbit up the mountain. As they were walking together, the tanuki began to hear a strange clicking sound coming from behind him. Oh, don't worry about those sounds. That's how the mountain got its name, the rabbit reassured him. But actually, those sounds came from the small fire the rabbit started on the bundle of straw. The tanuki began to smell the smoke and grew suspicious. But the rabbit told him that what he was smelling was just the unique fragrance of the mountain. This answer satisfied the tanuki until the fire grew so large that it burned his back. The tanuki panicked and ran around, searching for a body of water. The rabbit started the next phase of his plan and crushed and mixed wasabi into a paste. Eventually, the tanuki found the rabbit and stomped towards him. You can't trick me like that and get away with it, the tanuki said. Calm down, calm down, the rabbit replied. I'm sorry about the trick, so I made this medicine for your back. The rabbit rubbed the medicine on the tanuki's back, and because wasabi is so spicy, it burned the tanuki even more, and he ran away in pain once again. Knowing the tanuki would soon return, the rabbit built a boat to prepare for his third and final trick. When the tanuki reached him, the rabbit apologized for accidentally giving him the wrong medicine and promised to make it up to him by showing him an incredible fishing spot. All the tanuki had to do was build a boat, and the rabbit told him that he could quickly and easily make a sturdy boat out of dirt. So the tanuki built the dirt boat, and the two sailed out to the middle of the lake. Of course, after some time in the water, the tanuki's dirt boat became a mud boat and started to sink. You tricked me again! You're terrible! the tanuki shouted. You deserved what you got for falling for my tricks, the rabbit shouted back. Those words sounded familiar to the tanuki, but he couldn't think long about why, because he couldn't swim and his boat was completely gone. You deserve this for what you did to that old couple, the rabbit yelled. The tanuki promised to change his ways and apologized to the old couple if the rabbit saved him. So the rabbit did. The next day, the tanuki apologized to the old couple and promised to never trick anyone ever again. The old couple forgave the tanuki and thanked the rabbit. Then the tanuki walked away and the old couple never saw him again. But every morning, they would find that someone had left them fresh fruits and vegetables at their doorstep, and they lived out the rest of their days in peace.